okay, in this set of videos, I move on from the solar-specific stuff and start looking at the ham radio interface. Uh, so on my micro SDR radio, it has a, a what's called a CAT interface, and there's a library, a Python library called Hamlib, or well, it's just a library called Hamlib, which allows you to interface to the, the ham radio using, uh, in my case, Python. Um, so I'm looking in this video, I'll show how to set up Hamlib, make sure Python can uh, talk to it, uh, make sure it talks to my radio, and then uh, start setting up some web services in Flask uh, for the Hamlib functions I'm going to use. First thing I did for setting up the Hamlib environment was make a Hamlib uh, directory under my uh, home pi directory. I got a copy of Hamlib from SourceForge. This is the URL. So what we do here is go into the files. Hamlib 4.4 is the latest version. That's the one I used. And then down here you'll see this one here, Hamlib 4.4 tar GZ. So that's the one that we can expand. So I downloaded that and then I got that onto my Raspberry Pi. Now on the Raspberry Pi, I copied that file into the Hamlib directory. And I expanded it using tar. Uh, you need to install Swig if it's not already installed on your Raspberry Pi. This is the thing that allows you to get the Python bindings working. Now I can configure Hamlib, choose what uh, capabilities I want. So basically I just want Hamlib plus the Python bindings. So first I need to change into the Hamlib folder. Then I run this command. And this is going to create bindings for Python 3.9, which is the one I'm using. And put the resulting libraries into the home slash local. So there it shows me that I've created the bindings I want. So next we need to do a make to compile everything. And this takes a while, maybe 15 minutes, maybe 20 minutes on my Raspberry Pi. Uh, it might be faster on a Raspberry Pi 4, but I'm using a Raspberry Pi 3. Once that's finished, we can do an install of what we just made. And we'll do an LD config. Now I'm going to update my my path statement so I can find the Hamlib libraries. So I'm creating a new new file, add path sh under profile d. So this will get executed for every new new environment. And in that, I'm just going to append uh, this path. to the existing path. I could have done this in etc profile as well, but I put it in a separate file this time. And let's just see what the 
effect of that is. Um, I don't want to go through a reboot, so I was just doing a manually putting that path statement in, and we can see the path now has the home pie local bin path appended to it. And let's see if Rig Controls now working or Hamlib's uh, CLI. So Rig Control, I'll just ask it for its version. So it responded. So must be finding everything it it needs to get uh, Rig Control and Hamlib working. Another command for Rig Control is the list control. It shows all the receivers uh, that it has the capability of controlling. So I'll have a look at just the ones that start with TR. Oh, as a mistake, it should have been TS 480, which is the type of receiver that the micro SDR transceiver I've got uses. So now let's work on the Python 3 bindings. So I'll change into the bindings directory, and in there there's a Py3 test program which you can use to test the that Python can talk to Hamlib. So let's have a quick look at that. So I think to look out for is these two sysappend uh, statements that are in there. So for now I'm just going to sysappend where my binding files actually are. So I need to do that for the bindings location and the bindings lib libs uh, location. So that'll append it to basically the Python path for this when this program runs. And let's see if this program works now. Oh, I got what I'd expect coming out. So I need to add some more directories to my path and my Python path statements. So I took the opportunity to clean up the way I was doing this. Uh, so now if we look at uh, this file, so under etc and now profile.d which is a directory uh, so this all has scripts that get run when any environment fires up. And I made one called Solar Path SH. And let's have a look at that. So in here now, this is where I append to the path statement with uh, these two directories that I'm using, and to the Python path to these directories. So it includes the the shared directory that. Uh, the Solar programs uses and they are the handlib uh, directories for the Python bindings. So those are all in there. And if we have a look at Python path environment variable and path, so you can see those two uh, statements have had an effect and they're in there now. So that's all working. I've documented all this out in my GitHub repository, so under the working directory, this uh, markdown language file describes what I did and what I put in the file here. And just to test out it's all working, so I'm in my VS Code uh, environment, and down here I've made a copy of py3test.py, uh, and I took out the the way they were uh, adding to the the sys, uh, sys path, how they were appending things to it. So instead of doing that, it now uses those environment uh, settings to, to point at all the directories it needs to point at. And let's test this still works. So we're good. So that's going to make it a lot easier for all my Python programs as they're going to find everything they need to work uh, in various directories that have been set up in the path and the Python path environment variables. Uh, next up I needed to make the physical connector from the micro SDX uh, receiver uh, transmitter uh, to the uh, Raspberry Pi 
and I'm connecting through the CAT interface. So you can see here's the back of the transceiver here. There's a CAT interface that uses a, a eighth inch uh, four pole plug. Uh, typically you see them on microphones and things. Uh, and you can see here uh, what the various pins are used on that for on that plug. So receive on the transceiver side is on the end, transmits on the next one down, and then on the bottom is ground. We don't use this one in the middle. Uh, so I got a plug off Amazon where the ends were already uh, nicely tinned and things. This is what it looks like. Uh, I put the link down down below. Uh, so this is how one end will connect up and then you can see the whole thing connected up to a FT232 TTL to serial or USB uh, uh, device here. These are dirt cheap. Again, you can get them off of Amazon or anywhere else. And basically those three pins, the red, white, and black uh, receive, transmit, and ground need to be connected to the relevant pins on this FT232. And typical to, for these sort of connections is the receive on this end, is the transmit on this end, the transmit on this end goes to the receive on this end. And here's a better view of that same connection, but closer. Uh, so you can see the pin, the red connections connected to the uh, TX on the FT323 end and the uh, white transmit is connected to the receive and then the grounds connected to the ground. Okay, next I had to check that I could connect from my Raspberry Pi to the micro SDX transceiver uh, using that new cable and the TTL to serial converter. So I set up my micro SDX with this frequency and this mode and let's test it. Okay, see if I can do this right. Uh, so first thing I need to do is power up the USB interface on the Raspberry Pi, uh, which is this command here and I need to bind to it. So that's now powered up so I can now reach that FT232 device. And I can check that by doing a LS USB. And I can see it here. Uh, so now I'm going to connect using rig control. But in this case, instead of going to the default uh, transceiver, I'm going to the one that I'm connected into, the micro SDX one. So that model is 2028. We saw earlier on where I got the model number. It's Serial speed is 38400 baud, and then the interface is this TTL USB 0. So let's try that. So it looks like RIG Control is accepting requests, so I'll ask for the current frequency. And there we see that same frequency that was shown on the on the front. And I think I can, if I do an M, I get the mode. So there we see it's CW and the pass band as well. So that's good. Rig control and Hamlib underneath is talking to my transceiver, uh, but that's not the way I'm going to use it to, to interface from the from the Angular website. Okay, a bit of a sharp turn here and change of plans. Uh, so originally I was going to put together the web services just like I did for the solar web services, put them into Flask, and then have Python talking to the uh, Hamlib. Uh, but then I remember there's a thing called uh, Rig Control D, which runs as a daemon, uh, and you can talk to it through the network. And that pretty much exposes all the web services I need for Hamlib, and it's already built. So I'm going to swap over to using uh, Rig Control D. I'll show you how I set that up. Uh, so the rest of this video is probably more about uh, infrastructure, getting that set up, and showing how I can talk to it from uh, my Angular client. Uh, but I think this will make a things a lot easier, it sort of takes out the middleman, a lot less coding on my side and I don't have to reinvent the web services when Rig Control D kind of does it for me already. Earlier part of this video I showed you how to set up the Python interfaces. I don't think I'm going to use those now but I'll leave it in the video just because it took me a while to set it up. Uh, in some stage it, it may be useful to have those Python in interfaces and the bindings to Hamlib uh, but I, in the end I don't think I'm going to use them but I'll leave them in the video anyway. <laughs> So you set it up much the same as you do rig control. So I'm going to run it as a, a daemon here where with no hang up, it's not connected to my session when I close it. And the AND uh, 
lets it run in the background otherwise it's all the same rig control with a D on it the model the serial speed and the interface so let's run that so that's up and running let's so I'm going to do a PS and grip on rig control D so there we see it it's running there uh, so the way we can talk to that is that uh, uh, is running on a port on that uh, on the host on my RPI3 host at the moment so I'm able to send uh, requests uh, over the network to it uh, so this is where I'm saying send it to localhost that's the port that rig control D runs on by default and the command I'm sending is the get frequency so let's see if this is going to work Ooh, so we got the right answer we can still do things like get mode so that's good that cuts out a lot of the middleman I don't need to make flask uh, flask uh, web services I can really just use uh, rig control D as the web service that I interface to uh, for doing most thing that I want to do with the uh, with uh, the transceiver okay I think I got most of the pieces I need in place so this is the plan for running a rig session or running a ham session it is first turn on the the rig or the radio uh, using the relay so we've already got that uh, enable the USB hardware and uh, this is how you do it on a command line I'll show you how I do it from the uh, web service and then uh, we start rig control we just saw that do all the ham stuff and then just do the opposite to close out the session so kill rig control disable the USB hardware to save power and then turn off the rig relay to save power being sent to the radio as well and uh, while I was doing all that I had to do some more uh, clean up of the and housekeeping uh, so I've updated uh, what I put into the etc RC local uh, file so this is what gets executed on boot uh, so now I've got a couple of charmod uh, statements in there to open up uh, access so I can write to these two USB hardware uh, files which allows me to turn the USB hardware on the Raspberry Pi on and off save power or use a bit more power when I'm using it and uh, the way I do that is I updated the the shared library for solar relay uh, so the solar relay does uh, a few things now it uh, it turns on the relay when the rig's been turned on and then it'll uh, send 1-1 one -one to that bind uh, file so that will turn the the USB subsystem on on the Raspberry Pi and then the same thing here if I do a write of to the unbind with 1-1 one -one, they'll uh, turn it off and save power I need to do one more thing uh, in these two routines is to uh, fire up uh, rig control D so when it starts up fire it up and when it's uh, when I tell it to turn it off uh, go find the process and uh, and kill it so we get those three uh, things done each time uh, there's a day I say later so I've made quite a few changes to the uh, shared library solar relay uh, so now when it does a rig on uh, I'm doing more things and I'm also doing some recovery things so let's have a look so first I toggle the GPIO pin to turn the relay on to turn on the rig uh, then I do the send 1-1 uh, one -one to this uh, USB bind file which turns on the USB uh, hardware on my Raspberry Pi I do a sleep at this point and then I'm going to do a ch check to see whether it can see a TTY USB 0 and if it can see that that means that the serial port's been powered up and recognized by the USB system so things are going well but if it can't find it um, it sends back returns a error message in the return string uh, but it also uh, unbinds the, the USB hardware and turns the GPIO open off so basically gets it back to the state it was before the rig was started to be turned on and then a similar sort of thing happens when I fire up uh, rig control D uh, so first I try 
uh, firing up rig control D and it's going to run in the background not linked to any session I sleep for a second and then I check whether it's actually running so I, I use this PSUtil to check for a process called rig control D uh, if it is running then I I uh, set this uh, flag to true but if it's not running then I do the same thing as earlier I basically reverse what I did so I turn off the uh, USB hardware I reset the relay so everything's turned off and back, back to the same as before we entered this routine uh, if none of those things are true then it means I've successfully fired up uh, rig control D so last thing I do is just what was in there before I uh, set up the cache information about the the rig now being powered on and the, set the expiry minutes uh, so it'll still turn off automatically after what it, ever, the, ever the rig expiry minutes is. Rig off just does the opposite of the rig on process. So the other change up here was in the uh, in the web service for rig uh, so first I check whether it got passed on or off otherwise it sends back a 400 message saying the rig value must be on or off uh, if the value is on then I call that routine that we just looked at solar relay say turn it on uh, if it comes back with no uh, no string in the, or an empty string in the for the rig then it just returns an empty string string indicates everything was successful otherwise it'll return whatever was in that string explaining what the error was and a 400 message uh, otherwise for rig off it's a lot simpler it just calls a rig off and returns an empty string so, okay now we're over in uh, VS Code in Angular and uh, we were just looking at, at this so in the rig component in the TypeScript uh, code file for, for the rig page and I'll show you a demo of this um, I've added this in so uh, as well as subscribing to the response I also subscribe to the error so if there's an error so remember that if there's an error on the turning the rig on it sends back a 400 status message in the HTTP response uh, which will make it drop into this part of the routine and uh, then I, I've included a, a material snack bar so that's the way of displaying messages in, in Angular uh, and I just show the error message on that snack bar and leave it open for five seconds if I need to or you can close it off so let's have a look at what this will look like when I run it so here we are in the in the application and I'm going to try to turn the rig on and I know I haven't got a FT232 device serial port connected to the to the Raspberry Pi in the shed at the moment so when I do a turn rig on see it's throwing back this message dev TTY USB 0 not found because there's not one out there okay uh, here's the updated architecture for controlling the transceiver from solar UI the angular client uh, so same thing I set up a uh, HTTP client to do HTTP calls across the network to the solar www that's our flask uh, uh, Python program that has all the web services in it so the new thing is I had to add this netcat uh, function in there to be able to receive the HTTP requests and then just do straight TCP to port 4532 which is what the rig control D responds to which talks to Hamlib and then Hamlib's using serial to talk to the micro SDX plus transceiver uh, let's have so I'm in uh, solar www this is where all my web services are I've added this web service in called rig control and I pass it an operation and uh, this acts as the bridge between calling a HTTP web service and it calling rig control so what I need to do is call netcat which is the thing that communicates across the network to talk to the actual rig control D service and netcat if you look up the top is where I put together a netcat 
uh, routine. Uh, so basically takes a request and uh, does a socket level request across the network based on passing the host, the port and the content I want to send and receives it back and returns it back. I just got this off the internet. So here's my actual Netcat call. Uh, I've actually got two copies in here because I'm playing around testing at the moment. So when in production, I'll use this uh, loopback address because this is only get called from uh, uh, Angular UI that's running off the same host as the, the web services and Netcat and the rig control. But for now, I, I need to test across machines. So I'm calling uh, RPI3. Uh, the port number and then the operation uh, that I'm trying to perform. It's just a standard word control operation. I put a backslash in front of that uh, to get it in the right format. And when it comes back, I had to play around to work out how to get this to work. But I do a decode to UTF-8, return out to 200, and say that the content type is text plain so it gets interpreted correctly when it gets back to, the, to Angular. And then I've got an exception where if it fails, it it just returns a 500 and this is what it looks like from a browser if you do the web request so I did a get frequency it shows that if I want to do a set frequency I just and these are all the standard rig control operations and format uh, to put a space in between, we do a percentage 20 and then whatever frequency you want. So let's do 7.4 megahertz. And it changed the frequency. We see it reported back a status of zero, which means it was done. And now I can do a, another get frequency. And we see the frequency re now being reported. So just to check that everything's going to work, uh, in my Angular client, I added some uh, information about the rig. So picking up the rig frequency, the rig mode, and calculating the band frequency band that it's in. So I only show that if the rig is turned on. And uh, so down in the code now, I've got this update status. This is where it goes and pulls the rig information and it calls update status when I turn the rig on successful, successfully. And the update status uses this rig control service, rig control, which is under my services. And this is a fairly simple service call, just like the other ones using HTTP client. Uh, the one thing I had to change here was uh, not say that the return type is a string. That seemed to be fouling it up. It took me a day or so to debug that. But otherwise it just calls solo URL, um, the control service with the operation appended to it, and gets a response type of, of text. So I've got it emulating an iPhone SE, so kind of a small screen at the moment. But if I turn on the rig, then the rig information appears uh, because it does a call to the rig after it turned it on, make sure everything's communicating, and shows the frequency, the current mode, and calculates the bandwidth based on the frequency. If I push rig off, then that part of it disappears. So the idea is when you go into rig, uh, until you turn it on, you don't see anything about the rig. When you turn it on, that's your big indicator that uh, you're communicating with the rig and can control it. At the moment, I'm just uh, displaying information, but uh, when I do this for real, probably in the next video, uh, we'll work on the Angular client, uh, then the stuff will have update capability as well. So I'll probably have toggles to move the frequency up and down. Uh, probably have a drop down to select the mode and also have a pop out to actually change the frequency manually. There's not many controls I need here, so I probably won't have too many. I want to add in things like being able to send some Morse. And then probably after that will be a separate video where I work out how to stream audio back from the receiver so I can hear it on the on the remote machine I'm using and just give me an idea of what it looks like in different uh, devices. So. If I'm on my iPad uh, mini, then everything spreads out. 
uh, otherwise works much the same or if I'm on just a full-size website again things spread out to use the room that's available and you see I've uh, got some work to do at the moment uh, it doesn't reload the rig information even though the rigs turned on when I come back into the tab so got to work out that stuff uh, again that's for the next video okay so this uh, video didn't get as much covered as I thought I thought I'd get the angular client covered as well but mostly spent uh, this video on working out the architecture for talking to rig control uh, using rig control D was not what I expected I only changed over to doing that halfway through so I didn't really need the piece where I was setting up the the Python bindings because I won't be talking Python directly to rig control but the way I've set this up I think it makes it a lot easier um, so that's it for this video next video like I say will be more about the angular client following that I'll look at how I can stream audio from and to the remote machine